Whenever I make something in Blender, I'll often use techniques that people don't really talk about, which I think are really useful. So I've compiled some tips from my recent project, which I think you'll find incredibly useful. So if you ever want to make kind of wiggly arms or pipes or anything of that kind of nature, it's actually really quite simple. You're going to need three objects. You're going to need a pipe segment, you're going to need an armature, and you're going to need a curve. So to begin with, we are going to add an array modifier to this pipe segment, and we set that to connect along the z-axis. Next, we add a curve modifier to the pipe segment, and we specify the curve as the curve object. Next, what we want to do is change fix count to fit curve, and then we select our curve object. And as you can see, this fills the entire curve. Now let's just hide the array for a moment and come into the curve object. So first, what we need to do is select the curve, then shift click on the armature. Come into pose mode, select one of the bones, come back into object mode, shift click on the curve, come into edit mode, and what we can do is we can select this point and these two handles. It's important that you get all three of the points, and then we press Ctrl and H, hook to selected object bone. And then we'll follow the same process for this one just here. Pose mode, select the bone, object mode, shift click on the curve, edit mode, select all the handles, control H, hook to selected object bone. And let's come back to the pipe segment, re-enable the array, and now in pose mode, if we grab a bone, we can see there that the pipe is conforming to the length of the curve. Now you might have noticed these custom bone shapes that I've got here on this rig. Now these are actually really easy to achieve. You don't even need to make these yourself. There's actually an add-on that you can get called Bone Widget. And all you need to do is select a bone, pick from the list and hit create. And then it creates that specific shape. You can also edit the bones if you want something a little bit more custom. I'll stick a link to the add-on in the description. And if you're watching this as a short, then you'll need to see the main video for that link. Sometimes you need to change multiple values all at the same time. And when those values are identical, it's a bit of a pain to have to click in each field individually to change them. And what you can do is you can actually select all fields at the same time. And then you can drag to change the scale, or you can type the number in directly. Now this doesn't just apply to scale, it applies to anything where there's multiple fields. I found this really great way of making water in a vessel in Blender. Now let me just hide this outer glass. So this is my water object. And as we can see, the water change is in line with the rotation of the object. The way this works is I've parented an object to a bone just above the water and then use that object with a Boolean operation to cut the surface of the water away and then use a transformation constraint on the cutter object so that it rotates in the opposite direction to the bone. This means if I rotate the object, this object will rotate in the opposite direction and it'll look like the water is reacting to gravity. Sometimes you may need to have objects that repeat in a spherical fashion, but you also want it done in a non-destructive way so that you can edit the objects easily. One way that you can do this is by using an array modifier. So the first thing you need to do is have your base object. We then need to have an empty at the point of rotation and an empty at the same location as your object. We take the object and parent it to this empty and then we take this empty and parent it to this empty. Next what we do is we add an array modifier to our object that we want to copy and we uncheck the relative offset and instead we use an object offset and then clicking on the object eyedropper box here we specify this empty just here and now what we need to do is rotate this main empty in the center and so when we rotate it on whichever axis so in this case I'll say 45 it'll make them copy in an array this allows you to edit one object and it'll copy this to them all and this isn't the only way you can do this but it's a way that I enjoy as with other methods you couldn't do this sometimes you might want to get a pattern that curves around an object but when you UV unwrap an object it doesn't always work as planned what we can do is come into the UV editor and initially we can change the location to 0.5 and let's rotate this 90 degrees just as is my preference. Now we can use the UV squares add-on which is a free add-on that you can download and then we just simply click to square grid and now when we come back to look at our object we can see that the texture has aligned perfectly to the curvature of the object. Sometimes you may wish to conform an object to the surface of another, but if that surface isn't flat, you'll find that you have areas that are not connecting properly. You may consider increasing the thickness of the object and moving it closer to the mesh, but that doesn't always give desirable results. So instead, let's move our cursor to the object and we're going to shift A and I'm going to add in a lattice and let's just isolate these with the forward slash key i'm just going to scale this lattice down all the way to the same size as the object now in the lattice options 
we want to add some more geometry to it. So we can maybe change this to 20 and we don't need to do it on the W axis in this case. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the lattice and we're going to shift click on the object and we're going to parent it to the object. Let's come out of isolation mode and we're going to select our object and we're going to move it as close to the surface as we possibly can. The way that I'm doing this is I'm using the center face align rotation snapping option. What we're going to do now is click on the lattice, Alt P, clear and keep transformation. And then we're going to select the object again and we're going to shift click on the lattice. And now we're going to parent the objects to the lattice and we're going to click on lattice deform and this will add a lattice modifier now we take the lattice and we're going to add in a new modifier and we're going to do deform shrink wrap and we're going to eye drop the objects we want it to shrink to and now you can see how it squishes to the surface now all you have to do now is just adjust it to your liking the further away you move the thicker it will become and all you need to do is position it exactly where you are I cannot believe that i've only just found out about this tip so I have an object here which is comprised of multiple cubes and inside it there are lots of faces. Now these faces are never ever going to be rendered. They don't need to be here. But it's actually quite a pain to actually go in and delete them. Some may say well you can merge by distance and that does something but it doesn't solve the problem. We've still got internal faces and I've only just found this and I can't believe I've never found this before. All you need to do is go to select, select all by trait and then interior faces. And as you can see, all of these faces have been selected Then simply press delete and then faces. And now you're left with a very clean mesh.